cannot expect to translate our traditional concepts of justice into the unprecedented machinery of international law overnight. But three types of trials are already in operation. Number one, national traitors are being returned to the countries they betrayed, to be tried by the law of their own courts, as Quisling faces trial in Norway. Number two, criminals who committed specific crimes in specific localities will be tried in the countries where their crimes were committed, as these Germans have been tried at Kharkov. Number three, members of the Gestapo, SS men, stormtroopers, and any other offenders charged with murdering or mistreating American soldiers are being tried by American army courts under the supervision of General Weir, head of the War Crimes Office for the Judge Advocate General. In France, under General Batts, and in Italy, under General Richmond, trials are underway. As fast as we can identify, hunt down, and apprehend those guilty of war atrocities against American prisoners of war, we are bringing them to trial and holding them accountable for their acts. These trials are not to be confused with the United Nations International Tribunal, which will concern itself exclusively with major war criminals, whose crimes are so all-embracing that they cannot be assigned to any one geographical area. The ringleaders who conceived and engineered the Nazi master plan of world domination. To head the prosecution these men must face, President Truman has appointed as our Chief of Counsel Robert H. Jackson, Supreme Court Justice and former United States Attorney General. Assisted by General William J. Donovan and a staff that calls upon some of America's outstanding legal talent who will join forces with the most eminent jurists of Great Britain France and the Soviet Union. They will not content themselves with hanging a tyrant by his heels, but with laying bare the ugly core of his evil designs. The retrogressive blueprint for seizing power, smashing opposition, and waging illegal war. They will not content themselves with convicting a criminal on a single count when he may have been guilty of 50, but will seek conviction on conviction in order to put teeth into the international laws that condemn those crimes. Not merely punish the murderers of Buchenwald, but the Nazi hierarchy who planned a hundred Buchenwalds, a million murders, the systematic enslavement of Europe, the domination of the world. And so 1945 becomes the year not only of the Nazis' military defeat, but of their public trial that should serve as an unprecedented warning to those who would plunge the United Nations into another criminal war in defiance of the laws and treaties of peaceful nations who have joined together to outlaw man's greatest inhumanity to man, the crime of war. I am convinced that we have an opportunity to bring to a just judgment those who have thought it safe to wage aggressive and ruthless war. An historic meeting in London was held. The chiefs of council for France, Russia, Great Britain, and the United States signed the International Military Tribunal Charter establishing the laws by which the major war criminals will be tried.